Good morning, church. Happy birthday, church. (laughs) So today is um, Pentecost Sunday, Um, and so it is rightfully the birth of the church, like the whole universal church, because it's when um, God sent the Holy Spirit not to just a few folk, but to everybody. Um, So we will be celebrating that today, Um, and our theme will be what to do when we don't know who to ask for help. Um, Because, psst, spoiler alert, who we should ask is the Holy Spirit. Um, But I want to thank um, Camille for being with us today at the piano, and David's going to bring us the word. Um, Jen stopped by, and uh, she just stopped by, and and so I said, oh, would you like to sing with us today? And she's uh, game, so she's going to help sing today. Um, Thank you, Logan, for making things happen upstairs, and Dawn for um, attending to our uh, stream um, as uh, folks chat on Facebook. So my friends... It is good to be here at Trinity. Um, Whether you're here um, on the live stream, whether you are here in person, whether you um, watch later in the week, because this is the place that you are welcome. No matter um, your name, no matter where you came from, no matter what your spiritual journey looked like, you are welcome here. And so let us welcome each other with a call to worship. Um, David, would you come and lead us in this call and response um, prayer? So that we may mingle our words together and scatter the gospel of grace to all around us. Come, Holy Spirit, with your language of wonder. So that we may sing songs filled with memories and listen to the new carols sung by children. Come, Holy Spirit, with the music of your heart. To burst through the closed doors of our hearts and dance with us in the fire of renewal. Come, Holy Spirit, to rattle the windows of our souls. The day of Pentecost is here. Let the people of God rejoice. Alleluia and amen. So my friends, I would invite you to stand in body or spirit um, as the light of Christ comes in and as we sing, and Jen's going to wake her way up here. Thank you so much. Spirit, Spirit of gentleness, flow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, Spirit of restlessness, turn me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You moved on the waters, you called to the deep. Then you crossed up the mountains from the valleys of sleep. And over the eons, you called to each thing. Awake from your slumbers and rise on your wings. gentleness flow through the wilderness calling and free spirit spirit of restlessness stir me from placidness wind wind on the sea you swept through the desert you stung with the sand and you goaded your people with a law and a land. And when they were blinded with idols and lies, then you spoke through your prophets to open their eyes. gentleness flow through the wilderness calling and free spirit spirit of restlessness 
was destined me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You sang in a stable, you cried from a hill, then you whispered in silence when the whole world was still. And down in the city you called once again when you blew through your people on the rush of a wind. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You call from tomorrow, you break ancient schemes, from the bondage of sorrow, all the captives dream dreams. Our women see visions, our men clear their eyes with bold new decisions. Your people arise. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, turn me from blessedness, wind, wind on the sea. Please be seated. And as you are being seated, I would um, invite you to consider what are the prayers that are on your hearts and minds this week. Perhaps they are prayers of joy. Perhaps they are deep concerns. Perhaps they are um, wonderings about next steps. How can we pray for you? Betty, welcome home. So prayers for families that are scattered across the globe, um, prayers for travel mercies um, for uh, the uh, for Heather and her family, um, and for Jamie and Child One, um, who were not able to get on the airplane in Scotland because they tested positive for COVID, but Child Two. Um, got on the plane and is um, speeding as quick as the plane comes this way. Uh, so prayers for travel in times um, of pandemic. Dixie. Prayers for um, Dixie's friend Irene, and prayers for Dixie's brother who's making his way from uh, Bakersfield. Lots and lots of travel. Um, we've been kind of locked in for a while, and everybody wants to go somewhere now. Don.
continued prayers for Sherry. She's over the hump. Um, she's at week five of seven, um, so with chemo and radiation. And um, God has given her the gift of sleep, because um, I know she said she's having a lot of trouble with nausea. And the good thing about sleep is you don't know whether you're nauseous or not when you're sleeping. So praises God for sending the right medicine. And yes, Camille. Prayers for emergency surgeries. Um, Camille's niece had an emergency gallbladder surgery, and uh, we will be praying for her uh, continued and quick recovery. I'm glad she was able to have that surgery when she needed it. So, Jen, I know you are done with school, so praises be to God that you lived through it. Um, I think Camille's got one more day to go. Uh, we will pray for you to live through school as well. <laughs> And for all of those um, kids who have uh, either recent, who have um, recently graduated and whether they're going to those last days of school or not, um, prayers that they're making good decisions and um, for kids as they spring into summer. Any other prayers of joy or concern? Um, obviously. Um, we need to continue our prayers for um, folks in where there is war. <sighs> Things look so bad in, in Ukraine. Please keep the people of Ukraine in your prayers. Um, I understand that Kiev got uh, bombed. Um, there were bombs that happened just, just at the edge of the city. Um, prayers for the people of Russia. I know that for many, perhaps most of them, it is horrifying that um, uh, their country is named as the place that is invading um, Ukraine. For Afghanistan, where people are starving to death. For those places that um, we have known that there was hunger or war and we've long forgot about it. And prayers for our country as we figure out ways to quit shooting each other. May God protect us and surround us with love. We don't always have the prayers that we need to be able to express. And so God prepared for us and gave to Jesus, who gave to the disciples, a prayer for all times and all places and I invite you to join with me in speaking the Lord's Prayer aloud. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. David, once again, we have two Christian readings today, and would you bring the first one to us from um, Romans? This reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 22 through 27. We know that the whole creation has been groaning together as it suffers together the pains of labor. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have, the, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what one already sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very spirit intercedes with groanings too deep for words. And God, who searches hearts, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word inspired by God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. So, um... I am hoping that there are more kiddos somewhere. So while the kids are making their way up here, kids of all ages, 
let me get my sp special wind measurers, spiritometers, if you will. <gasps> Welcome. Come on up. Come on. So what color would you like? Blue. Blue. I know. I love the beautiful rainbow full of these. You know exactly how to use it. What color would you like? Um, orange. You want this one, this reddish orange one. And what color would you like? A purple one, yes. And she got the memo about wearing red today. Well done. Would you like one too? And what color would you like? Excellent, excellent. So today is Pentecost, and so we are celebrating the Holy Spirit. And one of the things we hear about the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit is Kruah, God's breath. And it talks about it a whole bunch in the Bible. But the important thing for us to know is that we also have breath because God gave us breath. Oh, there we go, there we go. Did you get your, yeah, nice. Did you get yours to move? Beautiful. So the next time you take a breath, in and out, remember it's God's way of saying, I love you. And I love you every moment, every time you breathe in, and every time you breathe out. So thank you for coming up here and breathing in and out with me while we talked about Pentecost. So you're welcome to go back to the nursery where it's much more fun than here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Thank you so much. Amen, God. Yeah. While the kids are uh, continuing to make their way back to the nursery, I would um, invite you to enjoy the music this morning. Um, our sister's going to pass the plate for an offering, um, and, but uh, unless you already stuck something into the touchless offering box um, or have another way to send it in, um, but enjoy the music nevertheless.
David, would you come and uh, bring us a lesson from the epistles again this week? This reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Suddenly a sound from heaven, like the howling of a fierce wind, filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered. They were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, Look, aren't all the people who are speaking Galileans, every one of them? How then can each of us hear them speaking in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the regions of Libya bordering Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the mighty works of God in their own languages. They were all surprised and bewildered. Some asked each other, what does this mean? Others jeered at them, saying, they're full of new wine. Peter stood with the other 11 apostles. He raised his voice and declared, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem, know this. Listen carefully to my words. About midnight, oh, let's, that was last week's slide, sorry about that one. These people aren't drunk, as you suspect, after all, but it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Rather, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. Startled from sleep, the jailer... Wow! last week's too. Yeah. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in these days, and they will prophesy. Prophesy. I will cause wonders to. Uh, I will cause wonders to occur in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness, and the moon will be changed into blood, before the great and spectacular day of the Lord comes. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word inspired by God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. So I think that um, on a, a day where we're talking about language, uh, it was uh, um, uh, good for us to have to stop and think, oh no, that's the wrong language. <laughs> that was for last week. So my friends, it will not come as a surprise to anyone who has been listening to me preach over the past two years that I have spent a lot of time calling out to God, please send help. And I want you to remember that a few weeks ago, the very week, next week after Easter, when we heard the scripture about the disciples hiding behind locked doors in the upper room. The scripture didn't say it outright, but the very act of hiding was a cry to God. Please send help. Then Jesus appears and breathes the Holy Spirit into them. Clearly, though, God realized that only giving the Holy Spirit to the disciples was not enough to accomplish God's purpose of redeeming the whole of creation. So God sends the Holy Spirit to all people. Even then, it's a gamble on God's part because we humans are stiff-necked. Remember Pharaoh and the Israelites? And we can be hard-hearted. Remember in Deuteronomy when God warned, don't be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward your needy neighbor? God warns that because it's happening. 
And we can be fearful. Remember how Timothy warned that God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and love and of self-discipline. All of these human things are calls for God to please send help. We humans need flames of fire to fall on us and burn through the barriers before anything is going to get through. We need the Holy Spirit to come like a howling wind blasting the cobwebs out of our hearts and minds and breathing new life into our world-weary souls. When that happens, when the word gets through, either because the Spirit gave a person different words or gave someone opened ears, it's a miracle. And that's the kind of business that God is in. This miraculous sign sets the agenda for much of the book of Acts set against the burning question facing the church at the time. Is the Christian message going to remain a local Hebrew variant of Judaism? Or is it to be taken to the whole world? A miraculous translation of preaching into, multiple, uh, into a multitude of non-Hebrew languages is a powerful demonstration of the answer. Everybody gets the good news. The gospel knows no bounds. Christ is risen. Death has been conquered. And there is no barrier, not even a lack, not even the lack of a common language that cannot be broken through by the spirit of the risen Christ. The victory over fear and death and hostile divisions has been won. The reconciliation of the world in Christ is now a certainty, a foregone conclusion. Alleluia. And the people said? Oh my gosh, people, we got to do that again. Okay, so the answer is amen. Can you give me an amen? There we go. Whew! That was close. Now, some of you may be thinking, that sounds a lot more like Easter. We've been hearing that for the past 50 days. Isn't Pentecost about something else? Well, you're quite right. It does sound a lot like the same message. And that's pri precisely because Pentecost is part of Easter. Despite our local congregational custom of using Pentecost prayers and colors until the end of summer, Pentecost is not really a separate season. It's simply the 50th and final day of, Easter, of the Easter season. And although the 50 days contained, contain the feasts of the resurrection, of the ascension, and of Pentecost, it is all one great mystery. And all one great celebration. The stories of resurrection and the ascension and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit are all different ways of making the same point. Christ is risen. Death has been conquered. There is no barrier that can stand against the spirit of Christ. And the victory over fear and death and hatred has been won. Christ is unstoppable. Alleluia. And where is this all leading us to? Well, although the world can't understand it, the answer is that perhaps what the world yearns for right now, more than anything else, is peace. 
peace that is not just the suppression of hostilities, but the deep peace that can come only from true reconciliation, where fear of further violence is removed. Peace with justice. Peace with trust and understanding. Peace founded on love. Peace with one another, with the planet, and with God, our creator. The peace that is Christ's gift to the world and which is found in no other. The peace that is found when the Spirit of God is poured out on every one and everything, and every dividing wall is swept aside, and every hard heart is melted, and all the debris of callousness and greed and the indifference are blown away on the winds that are wild. So why is the world not experiencing peace if Christ has given us peace and the Spirit has been poured out? Why is COVID killing and sickening so many people around the world? And why is Putin declaring war on Ukraine? And why are 18-year-olds gunning down black grandmas and killing 10-year-olds with AR-15s? Why do we still need to cry out, God, please send help? But sometimes, the to- but sometimes it is darkest and most scary before we recognize that the Holy Spirit is here. There's an old joke about someone sitting on the roof of a house in a flood who waves off a rowboat, a motorboat, and a helicopter because God is going to save them. But when they get to heaven after drowning and ask, why didn't you help me, God? God responds, I sent help, but you didn't recognize it. The period between D-Day and the final surrender in World War II was the bloodiest period of the entire war. The outcome was certain, but the consequences were yet to be realized in full. We're in that kind of time now. Christ is risen. Christ has broken from the stronghold of death and despair and torn down the walls on the way out. Christ's victory is beyond doubt, but the world does not yet know peace. We have tasted peace. We taste the peace of Christ every time we gather at this table. We taste the peace every time we open ourselves to the Spirit and invite the peace of Christ to purge us of our delusions and our hostilities and of everything that perpetuates division and selfishness among us. We taste peace every time we drink of the new wine and dance to the unfamiliar new tune that the Spirit plays. It may be no more than a taste yet, but when we have tasted it and celebrate it, then we will begin to know that the full fruits are on their way. Thank you, God, for the help you send every day. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. In the way that God sent the Holy Spirit to everyone in the United Methodist Church, the communion table is open to everyone, no matter your age and no matter your background. Because Christ understood that each person needed God's healing.
we remember the story of how Christ sat at table with the disciples, those who would stand by him, those who would um, pretend they never knew him, and even the one who would betray him. He stood, he fed each of them and shared the meal. It was a meal where he thanked God for the bread and broke it, saying, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And as the meal drew to a close, Jesus picked up the cup that was there on the table, the one saved for Elijah when the Messiah came and proclaimed to them, this is the cup of the new covenant. It has my whole life poured out, not a single drop withheld from you. Drink from this, all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts, we thank God and we give over to our Lord the broken, sinful places in our lives. We open our hearts so that the Holy Spirit can sweep clean that brokenness that we no longer will cling to the things that keep us chained to sin. And so, my friends, we too have that opportunity because God has declared that God is always prepared to forgive us. May we all recognize that we have been set free. Today, we'll be sharing communion by intinction. Um, so David and I will uh, come to the front and um, feed, I'll break off a little bit of bread, um, a big enough piece that you can grab it without touching my hand, a big enough piece you'll be able to dip it into the cup um, without sticking your fingers in the grape juice, um, and you're welcome to have a few moments at the communion rail if you'd like, or return to your seats. But you'll want to start that whole process there in the back where there's um, some uh, disinfectant for your hands. You who are at home, I hope you got your communion elements ahead of time because they have been blessed over the miles through prayer. And I know that some of you picked up um, little communion cups as you came in, and you're welcome to use those as well. My friends, the meal is set. I would invite you to come to the table. broken for you that you might be made whole. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of the Lord broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. Tommy Lou makes it. The body of Christ broken for you. body of Christ broken for you. The body of the Lord broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. body of the Lord broken for you. 
body of Christ broken for you. Body of the Lord broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. Body of the Lord broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. Body of Christ for you. Body of the Lord broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. Body of the Lord broken for you. salvation poured out freely to you, David. We have heard the gospel proclaimed. We have prayed together. We have breathed in the Holy Spirit. Let us um, stand in body or spirit as we sing of that sweet, sweet spirit. a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the Spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face, and I know they feel the presence of the Lord. All is well. So if you just stay right here with us, David's going to lead us in the um, uh, call and response prayer of benediction. We have heard the voice of God who scatters us to gather the world into the community of grace and hope. We will go to bring the fresh air of love to our neighbors and world. We remember the words of Jesus who calls us to share the whispers of healing of reconciliation, of renewal. We will go to be the breath of kindness to the ridiculed. We have heard the rush of the Spirit's wind to shatter our complacency and to give us voices for justice. We will go to whisper words of love and to shout for the renewal of people everywhere. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Amen and let us sing in response. I'm gonna sing when the Spirit says sing. I'm gonna sing when the Spirit says sing. I'm gonna sing when the Spirit says sing. And obey the Spirit of the Lord. I'm gonna pray when the Spirit says pray. I'm gonna pray when the Spirit says pray. 
I'm going to pray when the Spirit says pray and obey the Spirit of the Lord. I'm going to moan when the Spirit says moan. I'm going to moan when the Spirit says moan. I'm going to moan when the Spirit says moan and obey the Spirit of the Lord. I'm going to shout when the Spirit says shout. I'm going to shout when the Spirit says shout. I'm going to shout when the Spirit says shout. And obey the Spirit of the Lord. Thank you for joining us, friends. Um, come on back and have some refreshments with us in the parlor, and there'll be some discussion about uh, scripture and um, sermon today.